Shout out my boy Lex right here. Lex ain't with that. He's a he's a barber student. When you graduate, Lex? January. In January. And what's your Instagram, bro? At Lex Faze. At Lex Faze. L E X F A E Z. Follow your boy, man. Show him love. He he comes out to get a haircut every once in a while. We're gonna try these out on him. Let's see how they. Let's see what they like. See if they balled out. You feel any pulls, Lex? No, no. Hey, not bad, not bad. I dig them. They hit, bro. How much are they? 30 bucks? 30 dollars? Wait, not with that blade, though. Those, those come with a square blade. I don't, I don't understand that. I wonder why Walt does this. It's coming with a square blade. Yeah, it comes, it comes with a square blade. I don't, I don't get it. I don't understand those decisions. Why couldn't it come with the T-Allen blade? Because it's not the same blade. 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 So I mentioned to you guys already that we bought a barber shop. We bought a barber shop um, a few weeks ago, and I mentioned it in one of the um, earlier vlogs. And uh, it's over here in Gibsonton. And my in-laws, they um they actually live like probably right down the road from this barber shop that we bought. So it's been about three weeks. Chris Local, he's the manager there. Follow him on Instagram. But uh, he actually just um. He took over, he's the manager there, so we're turning things around little by little. So I just wanted to stop by and kind of show you guys the new shop. There goes our flag. Usually we pull the truck out and everything. And uh, that's our barber shop. All right, so you guys can see, y'all can see the parking lot. Plenty of parking, okay? Really nice businesses, really nice, clean looking new plaza. There's a gym, like a CrossFit gym, all the way over there. And then, like I was telling you guys, back there is a huge community that they're building. But we're excited about this location. And I, um, another thing is, we still gotta rebrand it. We're rebranding in the process. That's where Chris Loco comes in and uh, Helps us out. Danny's here too, helping rebrand. And uh, Loco's actually part owner of this location. So big ups to Loco. That man, he he goes hard for his team. So, so this is the famous, the infamous Panda, as Chris Loco would like to call her. What's good? What's up, bro? Don't mind my neon shirt. Okay, owner. Okay, owner. <laughs> Let's go inside. Get a little shot here. Welcome. Um, so Danny wants to roll everything out one time. So All at once. Yeah, exactly. Gotcha. So no little by little. Switching mirrors, switching mirrors already. It's looking like that was a must. These are the old mirrors that came to the shop. The stations we gotta switch out to. But going to the that's the trademark mirrors we use at all the headlines. Okay, logo. I see you with the big boy chair. <laughs> yeah, we gotta get rid of these chairs. These chairs are kind of. But that's what we that's what we rock with at headlines. 
This is what was here. They work though. This they're, they're still pretty decent chairs. My man did the wall. My man was painting the wall. We gotta have the the, the red backdrop wall. Gotta have that. I love the paintings that came with it. Guys, look at the ceiling. The ceiling is fire. This, I fell in love with the ceiling when I came in here. Wait till we drop the lights, bro. The lights we oh, gotta have cages. I can't wait, man. Wait, wait. Once we're done, once we're done in here, man. This, this. There's no reason why they ain't at least 11, 12 stations in this. And so that's my and, station right and there. Pumping and pumping it out. Wall. <laughs> that's the local station right there. And and pumping out haircuts. So. There you have it. This is the Gibson 10 location. If you are a barber in the area, especially if you're established, we want you. So if you want to be a part of a, of a hungry team, of an ambitious team, constantly growing, constant opportunities for you, hit me up. Email me. This is my email. But nonetheless, even if you're not established, we're opening a few more locations this year that are already in the, in the works. So... Um, if you're interested in being a part of the team, we, we, we definitely got a list of barbers who want to be a part of the team, but we'd love to have more of you guys, you know, wanting to be a part of the team. So you can email us too. Let me know, guys. So Danny. He got, he got paint happy, bro. Bro, I thought we were painting the back wall. Danny, the brains of the operation. <laughs> he doesn't even drink beer. We paint the accent wall, and he's not thinking, and he decides to... Paint a wall we didn't need to paint. We don't have we don't have any touch of paint. We don't have enough paint for it. Came in the new flags are pin. Woo, badass. I, I mean straight up pin, bro. Basio, let me yeah. ask you something, bro. What's up, bro? Does your wife have a car? Yes. Oh, so she's not waiting on you? No, she is waiting on me. To go home? Yeah. But she has her own car. No. To get home. No. So she's waiting on you to go pick her up to take you and the take her and the kids home. Yes. For the last 25 minutes that you've been sitting here Cracking waiting to walk out the door. Yeah. <laughs> this will be the last video Bazio ever does. <laughs> after hours, after hours of strenuous work, we managed to get it done. That's right. But you know what? You headlines bothers, you still manage to get it out. Taking it down at night. <laughs> Putting it back up the next day. Taking it back down. <laughs> Headline Barbers is coming to a town near you. Before you go, bro. Congratulations, bro. 1,000 subscribers, my thank G. You, thank you, bro. Thank you. Thank you to all the people that subscribed. Thank you, Bazio, for all the help. Thank you, Local, for editing my videos in the beginning, bro. <laughs> you know, it was a learning curve, but now I'm editing my own videos. And I appreciate everybody that subscribes. And uh, I'm going to keep giving y'all dope comp content. I appreciate that. If you're not subscribed, man, please subscribe to my boy, man. Come on, my boy. Oh, man, I, just, I just got off of work. Look at this, man. I get <laughs> off of work. I own, I own the barber shops. I'm with Bazio doing my thing. Editing videos, it never stops. The grind never stops. So, headlines. So, that was the beginning of my journey as a barber. So here we are. I'm in barber school. I'm in barber school. But this is, you know, everything's good in school. Like, it's my getaway. School was my getaway. I got obsessed about it. I would stay up late nights just, just watching videos of, of, of Victor Barber, of Al Millions, of anybody who was posting videos on YouTube at the time. I was, uh, who, who was the other guy? Um, the dude in Cali, the, the Filipino, I think it was Filipino. Um, Cake and his ran. I used to watch his stuff. And um, I was obsessed with it. But it was my, it was really a getaway for me because Things in the background weren't going so great. I was struggling, man. And, you know, it's like, you know, play the violin or whatever, sing to the choir, however, you know, however the saying goes. But my situation looked like this at the time. Behind closed doors, I was a dishwasher at Boston Market. I was living part-time in my car, part-time with my aunt and my cousins. There was a demon in my family, and that demon was drugs. 
So I couldn't stand being there in that household. Everybody was, was drugged up, and I'm talking about some heavy stuff. It was, it was not a good situation. So I tried to stay away from it. And the last thing I was going to do was go back home because, number one, my parents were, divor were divorcing at the time. So they, they were split up. They went together. And I, I really had nowhere to go to. So, you know, what I was trying to do was build a real heavy foundation while I was going to school. I was trying to, I was trying to build something, an income, so that once my wife graduated, because she was a year younger than me, once she graduated, we can get our own place together and make things happen. And we actually did it, man. Um, kept my head up high, pushed, no excuses. I ended up getting um, leaving Boston Market, going to Arby's, Arby's a restaurant, the restaurant Arby's, and uh, it was the they were just opening it. So I looked at this opportunity like, yo, this is a fresh start. It's a new store. I could I could probably grow really quick here, and I did. Like within a year, I'm 20 years old, and and I'm, I go from shit from from washing dishes, making sandwiches to the shift manager, to the assistant manager. Now I'm running the whole damn store. I'm 20 years old, I'm running the whole damn store. And you know, by this time my wife gets a job at JCPenney, she's making minimum wage. And we're not getting by. Like, you heard of paycheck to paycheck? We're living Amscot payday advance to Amscot payday advance. It sucked. And it just felt like the harder that I worked, the harder that it got, I mean, I was the guy that when the when my my pay raise when I whenever I got my pay raise my lifestyle went up too. So if I got a ten thousand dollar raise, or or went and got a nicer place or went shopping and went on vacation, I just I was I was I was I was terrible with financial literacy. If you don't know what financial literacy is, it's pretty much knowing about money and your finances. And um, you know it, it was it was it was horrible. It was dark. It was. It was hard and it was so stressful. Because of my lifestyle, it took me two years to finish barber school. But I kept up on it and what made me finish was my wife got pregnant. My little son Elijah, I'm blessed to have him. And that didn't make things easier. So, um, you know, we were, we were literally one of those people that were, that were a missed paycheck away from being homeless. Like for real, real talk. But I'm, I'm grateful, I'm grateful for it. That's part of the journey and it keeps you humble. It keeps you hungry, it keeps you ambitious, but it also, it also keeps you grateful. So, you know, at the end of the day, it was a blessing in disguise to go through what we went through, me and my wife, and she's been there since, <laughs> I'm telling you, she's my, she's my backbone. So here we are, I'm working, I'm working 60 hours a week, trying to finish school, Wife is pregnant, nice apartment, decent car. I hated the corporate lifestyle because I felt no matter how, how hard I worked, man, it just, it just didn't pay off. So it just reminded me of, how, of wanting to be an entrepreneur. It, it reminded me more of why I wanted to be an entrepreneur. So boy, I was doing whatever it took. Like if my schedule was from 12, 12 to close, I was in, you better believe my, my school opened at like eight. I'd be in there from eight to 11.30 just to knock out those little few hours because what I used to do was clock in and then leave and then come back at night and clock out. But they started they started tracking that and they started figuring it out and you would lose all those hours if they caught you. So I couldn't do that no more. So I actually had to be physically there. And uh, I mean, honestly, that's, that's the school has to do that, you know? So it made it a little bit harder for me. So anyways, I got my associates in barbering. So by the time I got into, barber, into the barber shop, I was ready. And you know, I'm not, obviously not at where I'm at today, but I was ready to build a clientele. So, you know, two years of cutting hair, and you know, you guys know my journey. I, I really started cutting hair, really started cutting hair in barber school, but it took me two years to finish. So here's some pictures of what my haircuts look, you know, my first year cutting hair in my first barber shop. You can see they were decent. I could build a clientele off of that. So, I, you know, my son, my, my son coming home, you know, my, my wife having my son, it just, it, it was my motivation that I needed and I finished. But I didn't schedule my exam until probably like three months after I finished. Cause I got a job, he let me, he let me work right out of school. I got a job, he let me work right out of school and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm hungry. Um, so what I did was I got a part-time job from Arby's. What I did was I got a demotion. Instead of running the store, I became an assistant manager so I could work part-time. 
I worked part time during the week and then Friday, Saturday and Sunday I worked in the shop. And what I would make on Friday and Saturday and Sunday, the first time, I remember the first time, it wasn't a lot of money, but to me and my standards at the time, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm making in these three days what I'm making a week. And then all of a sudden, you know, I'm bragging to my wife. She's like, don't do anything crazy yet. Don't leave your job. Stick with it. Next week, I'll make more than I'm making in, in a week and a half at my job. And three weeks into it, I'm like, forget it. I'm done. I'm going full time in this, in this barber life. So I made the jump. I did it. And I got slapped in the face real quick. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday is the busiest days. I was slow the rest of the week. I got a kid to provide for, I got my wife to provide for, she's working a minimum wage job. I mean, we're struggling still, but it made things easier and I loved the lifestyle and I worked my ass off because of, because of my, des my desire to be successful, because of my ambition. Like I, I pushed, man, I wasn't afraid of hard work. I was always the first one in, the, the last one to leave. Always the first one in, the last one to leave. Like I, I bust, man, what? That wasn't a haircut I wouldn't turn down. After hours, what? I can't afford to, to charge you more for after hours. I need to lock you in. When, when my pipeline is full, when I got so much clientele, I don't know what to do with it. When I got so much clientele that I'm turning people down because I can't fit them in my schedule because I'm working so much already, then I can afford to start raising my prices. Then I can start charging after hours. But man, I was humble from the get. I had to get, I had to get booked. I'm not trying to charge nobody nothing until I'm booked. Like, I don't care. I'd rather give out a free haircut than a discount any day. I'm not a discount barber. But the moment you try me one time for free, you're not going nowhere else. And that's how I felt in my heart. That's how I felt about my work and my work ethic and my service, the way that I treated people. And little by little, you saw it grow and grow. And, and by the time I got, you know, by the time we got to it, man, your boy was getting busy. And then I started butting heads with the owner of the shop. And it wasn't because I was being lazy. It wasn't because I was doing drugs in the shop. It wasn't because I was an a-hole. It was because I was hungry. Like, you gotta understand, like, I was trying to I was trying to use online appointments six years ago, seven years ago. And I did it. I built myself a website on Weebly.com. I set up Gembook. And I started taking online online appointments. Christian Perez, he was like, yo, that's fire. I want to do it too. He started doing it. Our customers started, they started booking us through the website. It was awesome. And then the owner of the shop finds out. Meanwhile, he's never there. He finds out and he's like, you got to take it down. Because what if, what if you leave? You're going to take all these clients with you. And if you decide to leave, that was never in my mind. I never was, like, at the time, I didn't have any ambitions to leave. It, it, so I, you know, when this happened, he, I, he didn't make, okay, so he made me shut it down just because I'm not the type of, I wasn't gonna, it's his shop and I gotta respect what he wants to do. Unless I'm ready to leave, I gotta respect his wishes, it's his shop. So I shut down the, the, um, the website, but that's when I woke up and I said, it's time, like, I gotta start thinking about some, some moves because I'm not gonna be held down like I don't want my ceiling to be down here my ceiling has to be unlimited of, of success my ceiling for success and Christian had always been talking about opening his own shop opening his own shop so yeah I was like his cheerleader in the background I'm like yo let's do it come on let's do it man we would be in the back room just dreaming just thinking of ideas just thinking of names for a shop just thinking of you know what we would want in a shop and just we were just dreamers man at the time we were just dreamers and then there was this one incident and it got really bad and pretty much he pushed us to do it. It was a blessing in disguise. We were pissed off at, at the owner, but at the end of the day, he pushed us to pushed us to be great. He pushed us to want more, even more, you know? And that's what pushed Christian to go to his best friend Danny um, and show him his business plan. And Danny's a smart, he's a smart mofo. Like, I don't want to curse on my vlog, but he's a smart dude and very experienced. And Danny was just like, yo, I want in. So the three of us, you know, we picked up and, you know, we did we did things right. We gave him a two weeks notice. We let him know what our plans was. We gave him a two weeks notice. I didn't tell not one of my clients 
that I was leaving, where I was going to, I just went. It didn't matter. I was ready. I was okay with with losing all my clients. I was okay with losing money, so that I could, so I, so I had, I could potentially make more than I've ever made in my life. So, we took the haircuts. We did it, and that's where Headlines was born. And ever since then, me, Christian, and Danny, we've been pushing, and now we've, you know, leaders have risen like Chris Loco, like Matt, like Kevin, and and you know, and Abby. Abby's a I already told you guys where to get, you know, his shirts are fire. You guys can check out his shirts. And, I mean, we're, we're, we're growing, man. We're growing, so. But that's not where the story ends. It's not where the story ends. I got to tell you guys about how the first headlines, how it went down. Great story. And then we'll continue to go until we get to the present. And like I said, hopefully the present then it's better than the present right now. I think it will be. We're working at like, we're like at five shops right now. So hopefully by the time I get to the present, we're like at 10 shops. Headlines. Let's get it.